हेलो हाय हाय गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग हाउ आर यू हाउ आर यू आई एम ओके थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू नॉट गेटिंग द लिंक दैट्स व्हाई जॉइन लेट क्लास आई सी इट इज द सेम लिंक एवरी वीक इट्स द सेम थिंग ओके सो इट्स हाउ इज एवरीथिंग गोइंग नॉट बैड नॉट बैड देयर इज सम गुड न्यूज़ द इट्स फॉर मी और फॉर एवरीवन फॉर एवरीवन इट सीम्स टू मी दे आर यू नो Uh, on september things will be changed so there will be some classes for in general there was the rule the so, class will be in september september n- not in our college but in general the whole general they're going to lose this rule so 
there would be some conditions. We don't know yet, but the, 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 uh, the, the province said we want to take the students back to the classes. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, okay. something like that. So um, that would be a good idea. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi, how are you? I'm good, sir. Thank you. How are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. Keeping um, it safe? Oh, yeah. Very safe. <laughs> okay. When we are going to start our class? We don't know that. Uh, all we know that the fact that... Uh, no, no. Today's class, when we are going to start? Okay. Um, I will uh, give it two minutes, uh, two seconds, uh, probably a second to just finalize everything. And then we will start soon. Okay, so uh, I still have uh, probably few people are not set with the group. So I'm going to make a few announcements regarding that. And please. Uh, <clears throat> Take it from there. Okay. Now, um, good afternoon, class. Um, I'm just going to uh, see. Here is the, the, the issue. Um, Um, please stay on mute if you have a question. Unmute yourself. If you if you don't have a question, uh, uh, please keep it on mute. You, you also can write, uh, and I will answer it. So you have two options of writing or uh, you know um, or answering. Uh, uh, I will answer that. Now, it seems to me um, a few of you guys is not part of the group. So what I will do, see, um, I said, as I said, it, it is, uh, you are, uh, you can be a minimum of five, maximum of six. So anybody who is not part of the group, please use now the chatting to announce that he's not part of the group and he's looking for somebody. Uh, to join. And anybody who has less than five, he can announce saying, I am four and please add me. Uh, I'm looking for somebody. So by today, I want to finish this uh, the issue of grouping. Uh, now, I'm, I've also give you an options of utilizing Padlet, utilizing Yammer, <clears throat> And uh, uh, the chatting on the on the uh, uh, Alpha College to to finish up this this issue. Uh, so please, uh, I'll give you a, a probably five minutes to talk among yourself and finalize this group set. Now you can be six up to six. So even if you're five, you can take one or you can be five. Now, if you decide to be three or one person or two people, I will give you the same assignment, same project, same assignment, and will t uh, evaluate you based on, uh, you know, uh, give you the same load of six people or five people if you're, you decided to go alone. And I also will evaluate you accordingly. So please be five or six people as a group because there is lots of work we're gonna do together. <clears throat> now, there is one thing I like you to know for, for fact. And um, you, w meanwhile, you are just uh, somebody saying, I don't have a group. If anybody says, uh, I'm not going to add anybody to any group. Uh, I need uh, one group who is five or four or three uh, announced there saying we, we can add you there. So uh, please don't write a, a private message. 
just announce it in the public to everybody. So if you're not part of the group, um, do that uh, uh, accordingly. Now, um, if you are two people, you can find a group of four people and be six, or a group of three and be five. If you cannot find, then you need to divide yourself on a different group. Because I said the maximum is six, and I see lots of you guys are five, or sometimes you're four. And some of them are three and still searching. So you're not searching. Uh, some, some of you guys are not searching enough to allocate yourself. Now the Padlet, you, you, don't, you, you need to go on a Padlet and announce in the right spot. The right spot that's created within the Padlet is the spot where is for entrepreneurs. So it's a padlet of entrepreneurship that is a within sub padlet and there is ones for supply chain management. So don't go on the supply chain management says I'm looking for that. No, click on, on the entrepreneurship and right there. Um, utilize now uh, here, uh, uh, right say, okay, we're two and we want to be part of the member. If you choose to stay two as a group, I'm gonna give you a work of uh, uh, for a load of six people, okay? And I'm expecting you to, uh, to do a good work as six people doing it. So if you wanna take that chance uh, as a two people and be tested on uh, writing an assignment of a six people, by all means, do it. I don't, I don't know, but I'm gonna see everybody is like made of six people. Whether you're two or one, you have to do a work of six people. So do you wanna do as a two people, work of six people, it's up to you. Or you wanna be a member of, 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 a, of a group where you can divide the whole work. It, it is done for you, it's you make that, that decision. I'm not gonna make that decision for you. But here is a, a group of five, you might be the sixth one. A group of four, you might two of you join them. Um, um, it is up to you. If you don't find anything, use this chatting now to be a member uh, of anybody. Make the announcement, say, we are two, we're looking for a group. We are one looking for a group. And the group who is four or a three says, I'm looking for members. Can, uh, so this way you can um, talk to each other about that. Now, um, on, on the next class, uh, uh, probably what we will do, we will do, um, uh, uh, I will expect you to, to send me your proposal of uh, final project as a group members. So there would be two parts of it, part you telling me who is your team, and the second part saying what you're gonna do as, as, a, as a project for the entrepreneurship final, final uh, class. So please, uh, uh, next class, you wanna make sure that you are sending uh, this for me. Now, um, uh, probably we will also um, have a, a, a quiz. In the quiz, we'll be answering uh, uh, four questions out of five. Um, so that also will be part of the next class. I will make also make an announcement on the, uh, the, the school forms. So you will be knowing that. Now all the classes that is getting recorded and it's gonna be uploaded to the YouTube channel that I created for this class. So if, you're, if you miss the earlier classes, you just go and click and start watching the classes. Or today, if you did not understand something, please write me the question or tell me the question and I will be glad to answer it. Or um, go back to the old, uh, you know, videos of today video when I publish it, and I will send you the link to click on and go there. Also, 
So these are uh, the final things that we wanted to uh, talk about it. Hopefully we can uh, manage uh, to finish chapter three. And if we have time, we will finish chapter four also. And let's see if we can, you know, in a, in a halfway, we can take some, some break. Let me know if you have any question. Now, the beginning, as usual, I will play a short video, but before I will show, play the short video, I would like to make a final thing for you. You are, if you're planning um, to open your business or to, you know, prospect here, this is the right course for you. This is, um, the best word is, you know, um, the top course where you utilize all other courses within this course. Now, let me say one thing. Um, you guys, as a, as a young people, you might be working for a company for a three, four years, but don't work for 20 years for a company. Um, have your own business. Your business might, in the beginning, you need a, a little bit hard work, but later on, the revenue, the income, the satisfaction that you're gonna get from doing such your work, uh, it would be a, a very positive, very wonderful. Not only you'll be more financially freedom, but then you would see also that there is um, a reward in it. Now, even if you look at the companies, there is some companies who is promoting that part is the entrepreneurship. There is investors also willing to do that. And I'm not talking about money only investors. There could be companies who, for example, ones from India wants to expand to, to Canada or from Canada wants to expand to the India and utilize these courses to, 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 not, uh, to have your own business. There is some analogy that somebody, most of, lots of people said it, and I would like to repeat it for you, is the fact there is a new, you know, in the old day there were a slavery. So somebody was working in a farm, and in the end, he's gonna get his food, and, uh, and you know, and the slave owner, he's the one who's making all the uh, money, and he's enjoying his life this phase has changed. Now, most of, lots of companies, although it's less in Canada, they are operating in a slavery way, but now you're getting a salary. And end of the day, you are trading your, your time and your effort and your intelligence for a few dollars that you're getting back. Do that to gain knowledge information, experience for a few years, but start thinking of opening your business. And you have a very uh, good situation because you're already exposed to, to the international market. There's so much things you can do uh, being exposed to the international market. And you have an upper hand to lots of people here where you can start your business. It could be any type of business that you can start. It could be a software, it could be a service online, it could be uh, uh, opening a small store, anything that will take you from uh, the, the, the stage of a different phase of a slavery. You know, I'm sorry to put it very blunt for you, is the fact um, it used to be uh, people farm, or do whatever and at night they get their food and they sleep. Um, but the slave owners, it got everything. Today, they change, they give you some salary and they make tons of money off you because they're not smarter, they're just willing to take some risk. Now with the knowledge that I'm gonna teach in this class, with the research that you're gonna do, you, you will be better equipped to, to to get out of this, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, sometimes you, uh, what you, what I call, uh, as a slavery corporation. Um, how many of us were driving so quickly to get to the work because we don't want our boss to get angry at us? Now, tell me what is that supposed to be? 
um, how many of us we feel underpaid, how many of us will feel, uh, you know, not treated fairly. But that's okay. You do that for three, four years, and later on, move on, uh, build your own business, uh, or share your ideas with somebody to do your, uh, your own business. So this entrepreneurship class, use it to, to strengthen yourself uh, and get it tools to, in order for you to, in the future, to be in a company that promotes the entrepreneurship or to have your own business to, to, to run, to, to, to do this. So uh, I hope um, uh, you do understand what I'm trying to tell you. Now, what I will do, I'm gonna uh, leave this chatting. So by, by today, uh, please uh, don't announce to me to put you in a group. I'm not gonna put you in a group. You announce to everybody and find out who is searching for uh, the last member of the group. And uh, if the group is missing one or two, also use this to find out how you're gonna do it. Now, um, I, I did do a very a small test on Padlet. Some of you have answered really well. And uh, uh, the picture that I took and I wanted to get uh, a feedback, but that's not the end of the Padlet. Padlet will be more developed later on for answering some question for more uh, uh, information. I would want you to utilize a multi tools because this is the way is life going on now uh, and will be going on this way. So uh, please utilize these Yammer, um, Padlet, uh, Facebook that also there's a group in it and Alpha equipment that they give it to us uh, uh, to, to, to understand better what's going on. Now I will share a small video now and uh, we will start right away after the video, the, the, the class lecture. Here we go. Send it to you used an email marketing service like iContact to send you and hundreds or thousands of its customers those emails. But what makes iContact unique is that it was started when its founders were still in college, and now their idea has rocketed iContact to over $15 million in sales this year alone. The business environment is always changing, and with that change comes opportunities for entrepreneurs. Business success often starts with finding a need and filling it. Entrepreneurs Ryan Alice and Aaron Houghton of iContact wanted to revolutionize email marketing and in doing so became more successful than they ever imagined. What we saw was that entrepreneurs and small business owners needed an easy way to send out their newsletters. It was simply too complicated for the average business owner to send out an email newsletter to their customers. This allows small businesses to compete with big businesses online and basically use uh, the same type of tools that larger corporations use to promote themselves and to build relationships with their customers. What we wanted to provide was a simple one-stop solution to allow anyone to manage their online marketing and communications. And that's what we did with iContact. Businesses sell products or services to make money or revenue. If the revenue is greater than the cost that business incurs, then the business makes a profit. If the costs are greater than the revenue, the business incurs a loss. Obviously, the goal is to be profitable over time. When we got started, we really didn't have any capital ourselves. I remember I had about $12,000 to my name and it was going down by about $1,000 a month. So in our first year of business, uh, we did about $17,000 in sales over the entire year. So 
I knew I had about a year to figure out how to make things work. We had uh, two employees uh, really throughout most of that year, which was Ryan and I. Um, in our second year, we uh, broke $200,000 in revenue. Um, and for the last five years, we've uh, significantly more uh, than doubled the revenue every year. We today are not yet a profitable company. We are growing so fast that we've chosen to go out and raise investment capital so that we can fund that rapid growth so that we can be profitable in the future. In 2007, our revenue was uh, a little bit south of uh, 10 million. Um, and we expect to be able to double that number this year uh, and are still tracking to double that uh, in 2009 as well. Starting a business is one of the best ways to achieve success, but with that success comes risk. Risk is defined as the chance an entrepreneur invests time and money into a business that may not be profitable. Not all businesses are equally successful, but those that take the biggest risks often end up making the most profit. There was very little actually to risk um, because of just the, the lack of kind of resources and net worth we had at the time. But then you could also look at the fact that the product was built for a paying customer, which limited a lot of risk up front. What we calculated was our customer acquisition cost, how much money we had to spend in advertising in order to get a customer to sign up, which was about $300. We calculated the lifetime value of our customer, which was about $2,000. And we figured out that that was a good me metric. We invest 300, we get back 2,000. Ryan knew marketing products. I had built a product to serve um, companies that wanted to market themselves online. I think we felt like we had the domain expertise and a working product and almost nothing to lose. So it was an easy choice. Successful businesses also contribute greatly to the standard of living and quality of life for all. The U.S. has one of the world's highest standards of living, largely because of the wealth created by its businesses. This wealth, along with the freedoms, education, health care, fair tax code, and natural environment we enjoy, leads to a high quality of life. I think we have one of the most friendly uh, climates for business, for small business, and for entrepreneurship in the world. And I've benefited a lot by being an American and being able to have the infrastructure and investments in education in healthcare and technology. This business, High Contact, for me is just a way to uh, provide something of value, create jobs here in North Carolina, and be able to gain in leadership ability for the future such that I can uh, be able to make an even bigger difference. Businesses also struggle to meet the needs of their stakeholders in addition to being profitable. Stakeholders can be customers, employees, stockholders, suppliers, the surrounding community, environmentalists, and such. For example, profitability is weighed against employees' needs to make more money. Cutting costs may mean not being environmentally friendly. Outsourcing overseas could hurt the local community. The stakeholders that we find very interesting are the community, as well our local community, which we're very involved in. We support a number of charities uh, throughout North Carolina and the world, actually. And then I think there's also the environment. I think we all have to consider what the impact of our business is on the world uh, overall. Uh, a lot of clients that move to us are leaving from things like direct mail uh, and printed media where there's actually ink waste and uh, paper waste. Our clients send about 650 million emails a month um, with their brand name on them uh, through our system. And for the most part, those are pieces of uh, information that uh, would have been in print. Entrepreneurs play a big role in the creation of wealth. There are five factors of production that contribute to wealth, land or natural resources, labor, capital, entrepreneurship, and knowledge. The difference between what makes a rich country rich and a poor country poor is mainly the proliferance of entrepreneurship and the effective use of knowledge. Great ideas uh, are sometimes a dime a dozen, uh, especially in the technology world, and it really comes down to uh, execution and resources. So do you have the time, do you have the money to put behind it, and then do you have the discipline to stay focused on the goal and to actually see it through to completion? The business environment refers to all the factors that affect the development of businesses. There are five elements in the business environment, the economic and legal, technological, competitive, social, and the global business environment. Let's look at each one briefly. The economic and legal environment directly affects the risk of starting a business. If taxes, regulations, and interference with free markets is minimized, businesses have a much better chance of success. The laws in this country, uh, I think, are set up to allow certain types of resources for entrepreneurs and a certain freedom to um, be focused on any specific thing that, that an entrepreneur might want to pursue. Um, and I think the resources that, uh, that we have available to us here 
really cause uh, people to succeed in the U.S. The technological environment includes the Internet and other technologies that allow businesses to operate much more effectively and efficiently than ever before. They can do more with less, which means they are more productive. The Internet, computers, information technology have been absolutely critical to our capability to start eye contact and to grow eye contact. Um, and by getting that dot com name and building a business behind it, we're able to uh, kind of get credibility uh, instantly and access across the world. Not only do we have a web-based software product, but about 95% of our marketing is done online. So really, without the web, we would not exist as a business today. The competitive environment is greater than ever. Customers want more and more, and exceeding those expectations is how businesses compete to win. Businesses must be nimble, able to restructure quickly, and empower their employees and managers to make decisions that enable them to beat the competition. We empower our employees and our team members to achieve their goals and their dreams and allow them to work hard. We tend to avoid micromanagement. We tend to hire smart people, train them, and then we let them go, let them free to achieve uh, within their own uh, organization, within their own departments. Managing diversity means more than hiring minorities and women. Age, sexual preference, religion, marital status, disabilities, and cultural differences are all issues in the social environment that businesses must deal with sensitively, not only with employees, but also with customers. Having people from different backgrounds uh, with different skill sets and experiences is important to making sure that we understand um, how our product affects our customers, which come from uh, just as diverse of a background as we hope to have uh, people on our team here. The last element is the global environment. Globalization and world trade have exploded because better distribution and communication systems have made the world a much smaller place. But other adverse factors such as war, terrorism, and global warming can also have a big impact on how businesses operate in the future. Being an online company from the beginning, about 20% of our sales have been international without any special marketing to different countries, without any special support for those countries. Just having an online product in English allows you to get another nice additional percentage of the globe uh, able to use the product in, uh, in a very seamless fashion. So we've learned that there are many factors that affect the business environment. We've also learned that entrepreneurs like Ryan Alice and Aaron Houghton are free to pursue their dreams if they are determined enough. The success of new businesses like Eye Contact is a result of the evolution of businesses in the United States. What the future holds in store is nothing short of amazing. The question is, what will your part in that future be? If you had a vision and you communicated that vision, if you respected people, People would follow you. People would be part of your family, part of your team. I wish there was a simple answer to how you get from a couple of guys living in an office and um, you know sleeping on a futon and eating on a George Foreman grill to uh, a multi-million dollar company with uh, 100 plus employees. If you can be happy, make money, help others all at the same time, that's really when you'll achieve your, def your definition of success. Okay, um, so all of you have seen the video. Um, it's kind of, a, as we said, it's like a, it's, a, it's if you can, if you're in a position of making money and like your job and helping others, it's a good position that makes you happy. Um, got so many friends who is really they were working in some place and they decided to have their own business and now they are. Um, really um, very big uh, right now. Um, entrepreneurship is something that you will enjoy it if you practice it. See, I did enjoy it when I uh, starting the higher education solution within uh, MENA, Middle East and North Africa. I did enjoy it when I uh, expanded this company to uh, other uh, territories like Iraq. I did enjoy it when I expanded the Kuwaiti companies in uh, other countries, in uh, in Canada and USA. It is the values that you gain from from uh, <clears throat> uh, 
the positive feeling that you gain from these uh, activities that is much, much more appreciated in a way. Now, um, I will, uh, let me know if you have any question. So uh, without further ado, we can, you know, um, uh, go to the chapter three. Um, now let me know if, if, it's, if it's clear uh, and my voice is clear or not. Uh, so in the chapter three, we will, uh, uh, in the chapter three, we will uh, uh, talk about generating and exploiting uh, uh, new entries. And uh, a, a new entry is basically, uh, as we said, it is um, uh, a new, it's one of the essential act of uh, entrepreneurship. Newness can be both, uh, by the way, good or bad. And you can be doing something is really good and you can do something is really bad. And I can give you two examples in the situation that I had to face is uh, on the first time uh, I did manage uh, Iraq territories for uh, a product called Tijari.com, which is makes a trade between organization. Now, in that time, when I walked in, though we didn't do enough studies and the management, I assume the management, uh, the owners did enough studies, uh, but unfortunately, it didn't fly for, I uh, will explain later why it didn't happen. But on the second case, when we uh, did work for another company and Again, they chose me to expand to Iraq. Uh, we managed to start a, a $14 million contract, went to 70 something million dollars contract for a year, and then became a very big. Uh, so uh, while we end up buying um, um, that part of the business and they paid to our company that I was working for is around one billion dollars, nine hundred thousand dollars, actually nine hundred million dollars, and some, some, some uh, more. So, um, um, so the entrepreneurship or uh, part of it is a new entries, and it could be good, and it could be a very, uh, you know, it could be bad if you're not doing it the right thing. Um, a strategy for newness is basically you are there to maximize your uh, uh, your benefit and minimize your costs uh, and the generation of uh, uh, of a new entry opportunities you need to exploit and see the feedback of it now if the new entry exploited performance depend on the how you enter to this business um, how you can reduce the risk uh, and uh, the way either your firm uh, is organized, whether you are working for a company or you're working for uh, yourself. It's all, uh, it takes into consideration if somebody trying to come into your business and compete with you. And also your competency your background knowledge, your skills, uh, uh, it's very important to be, uh, um, you know, competent in this matter. Now, um, so the whole goal is actually, um, it's the fact when you do a business, you need a new entry, you need to look at these issues because once you're successful in this business, maybe there's somebody is competing with you and uh, competition is, they see your business and they will do the similar thing. So you need to set up your strategy in a way, uh, make it a little bit difficult to enter, you get more competent. And this is why I said competency of entrepreneur and management team. This is why I said, when you try to do your business, you might work for four or five years, 
to gain this knowledge that you're not gonna gain it from uh, internet or from research or even from the class experience, hands-on experience that you need to do. So uh, this is the part where you are, uh, you know, important that you look at it. Now, the value if it allows, um, um, uh, valuable if it allows the firm to persuade opportunities, uh, you need to naturalize the threats and uh, offer a product or service is a value for customers. So they're, they're, if you bring in something that the customer does not see it as a value, they would not persuade it. So in that time, when we walked in and tried to promote a trade between different companies within Iraq, um, um, lots of corruption was going on there. So they saw that they will be transparent to everybody and they didn't like the fact that transparency is there. So they didn't see a value in that. And that was causing a, 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 a not to succeed in some time. Uh, uh, rare when you, as I said, uh, few or no competitor, you have it. So you, always there was somebody will be uh, uh, trying to uh, replicating you or uh, trying to compete with you and have an upper hand over you. Now, um, you can, let me know if you have any question. So uh, the entrepreneurial resources is the fact that, uh, well, uh, uh, okay. I don't see any questions, um, just uh, names, announcement of names. Uh, you're already doing your entrepreneurship and marketing campaign. The basis of, of for entrepreneurs is a knowledge. Build up your knowledge, uh, your experience, and be somebody who cannot, it's not easy to imitate you, to do similar like you. So um, this is uh, uh, the person with a lack of knowledge are less likely to uh, really uh, to recognize or create attractive opportunities for a new product. So in working here, you might be gaining some knowledge and experience, which is it might it it, it gives you a chance of uh, you know um, probably compete very well. The following consideration help the entrepreneurs determine if the product is valuable, rare, uh, and is not able to, uh, it's worth of, uh, uh, you know, pursuing. Uh, first, you need to collect the information on a new entry. And uh, and see that is there is a window of opportunity for you, or not? There is no no such such thing. And as we said in the earlier classes, if you you see there is a window of opportunity, then you pursue the next step, which is doing a marketing research and analysis, and then uh, the comfort in the, making the decision. If you're uh, most of the times entrepreneurs is not a hundred percent, they are uh, uh, sure of their business that can succeed, but not persuading that business might make you feel bad later on. And if you see some others are doing really well. Now, when we started uh, a mobile diabetes, and we did the the, the 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 protocol and the samples of mobile diabetes application. We were the first people, but um, we had people who were supposed to work with us. They were less entrepreneurs, and they were worried about the fact we are the first company. So they kept putting more restrictions and rules on us 
and being not under, uh, a little bit naive on this case, we kept persuading that. And all they did is buying time because the other side is whether they come up with this or they don't come up with this idea, it's, there is no positive things for him. So he just kept putting conditions and we kept doing it. But later on, um, we, we found out that somebody in USA has came up with a similar idea and he, he made now, he's a billionaire now. Um, and uh, what stopped us from that is the fact we have partnered with the wrong people. So uh, sometimes an assessment of a new entry's attractiveness is less about if the opportunity exists uh, and more about the entrepreneur believe they can make it work with entrepreneurial strategies. So because we or uh, the other side of the team who's supposed to work with us did not believe that we in somebody from um, Middle East and or North Africa can come up with this idea and he's expecting somebody from USA or from UK should be coming up with such an idea. Otherwise it's gonna be a failing idea. So this is what made him, you know, buying time, not telling us that he's not interested, otherwise we could have found somebody. But he was the gatekeeper for this. Now, later on, we just showed him how a, this person who came up with a similar idea uh, and, and was on, uh, I think, uh, NBC channel, uh, how uh, how he was a doctor and uh, he was uh, became a billionaire. And from that, it was, it's called, uh, he didn't call it mobile diabetes. He had a different name for it. And uh, it moved on from there became big. Now we can, now when we are in this situation, we cannot enter because we already have a competition. So the whole thing is when you had a partner, you need to even evaluate your partner also in this case. Now, um, so the whole issue is when you're working on uh, first mover entries, first mover entry, uh, develop a cost advantage. So your cost will be less because you are a first mover to come up. No competition. The setup should not be very complicated. First mover will face less competitive and the first mover can ensure uh, um, uh, suppliers and channels of distribution. And also first mover are better positioned in the safety satisfy customers because he's the first mover and there is nobody is moving with him. So here is the situation. When we went and got the building higher education solution, uh, we made sure that, I made sure that the, when we are building the solution, um, nobody can compete with us. So I went and built, two pillar, two gatekeepers for a solution, which is content management solution and uh, student information solution. And I know anybody who wants to provide a solution uh, other than these two to, uh, to, to the university, they have to be integrated with these, one of these two or both of them. So when a Microsoft came in and SAP came in, and they found out that we came up with this concept. The comment that in the that the Microsoft representative I made in the end of the meeting, because when he started exploring the Iraq market, he thought we will be a follower of him. But then when he thought we he saw what I'm doing, what we are doing, he said, "Well, you have the winning card." You, you you know how to, you know, because of the experience that I had is I knew right away, if I'm building a higher education solution, there is two pillars, two gates, it's content management, is the portal that you are using now. And the student information system 
is the place where your name, your email, your mark is there. And any library management or any other solution has to be integrated to this. So I built it in that way. And uh, this is where uh, the concept comes in from the experience. And so if you do a research and says, okay, this country needs a solution in the higher education, but you don't have the experience, you will build a higher education solution, but somebody will walk in and do a competition with you. So usually the first mover gain expertise through the participation and everybody will be coming to seek this expertise. And first mover advantage wants O to eight the disadvantage. So you have to know, you look at it, the environmental stabilities, the safety, the ability to educate the customers. Uh, when, I'm, when I was sitting with, you know, one of the uh, managers of higher education and, and I tried to explain to him who the, the, the education, current education, how it's happening. And I'm talking about like 10 years ago, he would not understand you know, why there is an online thing. And, 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 uh, and luckily, some of the schools have done it and they don't have a problem now. The rest of the school, school universities who did not follow my advices, now they are suffering in Iraq. They cannot, you know, have the student online to do the courses, to take the courses, to register to all these things. And all they, they're using is you know some kind of uh, um, a Zoom or uh, a, 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 you know an outsider channel, which is that not an educational solution. So now if you go and check, everybody, all the students is complaining, all the professors are complaining because somewhere in the management of these schools and universities did not really look at the future. Of uh, uh, you know, but in the same time, as I said, when you are offering these services, you need to build something to make sure it's difficult to be penetrated, as as depend on the product or uh, services that you are offering. Um, we're soon going to be uh, taking a very short break. Um, so. Um, the performance depend on the fit between a firm's bundle of resources, what kind of resources, and the external environment. So if you have um, the success factors, do you have the keys for that, and the environment is helping you, uh, then you will be su succeeding. Uh, here in Canada, such an environment is available. All you need to do is to dig in and find the success factors. Okay, um, now, nobody has any question? Wonderful. So uh, basically, uh, uh, entrepreneur face a demand and uh, technology uncertainty, as we said. And we explained that, that the uh, demand, when you walk in a, in a new market, you don't know um, whether it's, there is a demand for it or not. So there, there is a solution of uh, maybe you wanna target a certain group or you wanna uh, provide a multiple uh, products uh, for everybody. So uh, first mover uh, often, commit to a new unproven technology um, and or unproven territories. And that's where it makes it a little bit challenging and fun in the same time. So uh, change in demand or technology means the firm must adapt to a new environmental uh, condition which is sometimes it's difficult to do that. So um, as I said, when we walked in and trying to promote uh, B2B business, um, there wasn't a strong internet. There was not enough electricity. There were 
corrupted country. They were not in true, you know, all these environment, there was a dangerous environment. So it was very difficult. Meanwhile, that's in Iraq, but meanwhile was booming this business very well in Dubai, doing very well in, uh, 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 in, in Saudi Arabia, in Kuwait. And when I'm, I'm talking, it's like Amazon 20 years ago. So keep in mind, 20 years ago, there was no Amazon or, or, or you know. So uh, sometimes you come up with a solution that uh, it is, uh, you know, it could be outside the, you know, the stage. And you have to look around you. I'm pretty sure there are so many solutions that in India that you can export or services that you can export it to, to Canada and vice versa. So um, be sure of yourself and, and, and do that. Um, so uh, first mover disadvantage may outweigh the, the, the thing, okay? Um, this could be the, we'll take a break after that. The element of a nuance may mean uncertainty of customers. So you're not clear, they may be uncertain about how to use the product or its benefit. So there was lots of training and teaching you have to do. Now, and to avoid this problem, if you find it's too heavy for you to do teaching and training, uh, you wait until another competition comes in because they can share this knowledge with, uh, you know, cost of the marketing campaign and knowledge. So you can do that. When the product is highly innovative, the customer may lack a, a frame of reference for processing the product. So they might don't have the knowledge how to utilize these uh, technology. Uh, so you need to train them. Um, the, the first mover can have an advantage when education directs customers' preference to the firm product. Um, when the, the firm is seen as a founder uh, and when the firm can create a barriers, that's the best situation where uh, you can be really successful. Um, so probably we will um, uh, take a break here and uh, we will uh, come back in say uh, uh, 45, 4.45, so 10 minutes, maybe a little bit uh, more or less, but please uh, be uh, to, uh, to be here. So, um, um, now we will continue. And if you have any question, please uh, let me know. Um, so, um, Okay, um, we stopped here and um, we said that the lead time for first mover advantage and disadvantage. The, the first mover can extend the lead time. So it can utilize, um, you know, his, uh, you know, um, if he makes it a strong barriers to entries, that should not have a problem. He he's also can build a loyal customers, and can create some uh, switching cost, 
uh, as also he has an option of doing a protection, protecting the product uniqueness and securing uh, access to the important source of supply and distribution, as we said. So these are all things that uh, the first mover, first enter uh, can do. And uh, a barrier to entry is um, a probably uh, um, uh, if there is insufficient customer demand, uh, you, as I said, you consider allowing competitor into the industry to share the, the initial cost for it. So that's, that's one of the things that you might look at it as, you know, how to uh, do that. Uh, the risk reduction is, uh, it is the strategy for the new entry um, is the fact that uh, you can narrow the scope and you can focus on a one city or you can focus on a, a, a small number of customers. So a friend of mine called me and he has a, a, a site where he needs to launch it and having all the uh, stores to use that site to announce their products and you know, all, you know, it's a B2C. So my first advice was to him, because of the experience I have, I told him, listen, you need to target uh, a small community, a small city, and instead of going the whole country. And the reason is the fact that you have lots of competition doing B2C. So from there, you can really um, uh, probably do a much better job once you do this well then the, the, the thing you can grow later on, there shouldn't be any problem. So the phase thing, the, the thing is that you might focus on a certain product, small product range, or to a small number of customers, uh, or a, a broad, your scope strategy, take a portfolio, multiple products, so the customers will be, you know, if not doing well on this product, product B, product C, product D, so you have all less of the product. And this is what a uh, big company is doing. But as a small size company, you might uh, target a, a small. So say, say I'm gonna uh, target the, the Scarborough community to do this business for them. So um, uh, there is a limitations and the limitation strategy is the fact that you might um, uh, take into consideration. But there is another strategy where you can copy. And we notice uh, there's so much copying uh, happening, it's happening without plagiarisms. You do a copying uh, when you, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, see somebody's doing well in this business, so you try to be the second. And imitations usually is easier than conducting a systematic and expensive search. So you see somebody is doing well in this business, you say, okay, I will do the same business in a different area or uh, targeting different uh, community or different uh, scales. Uh, imitation successful practice help the entrepreneur uh, also to develop their skills necessary for that industry. So if you notice somebody is opening a small store selling potatoes, so if you do the uh, same thing, that, that's fine. And what, what's happened is that when we moved in, to establish the uh, software solution for higher education. A company who usually supplies uh, the internet for uh, the whole universities in Iraq, they started building their own application or brought their, the other application just to compete in that field because they knew we will be uh, the, uh, you know, uh, successful in this matter. So they started utilizing same thing. So the imitation strategy, including like a franchising and me too strategy. And, you know, the franchising is everybody trying to, you know, utilize uh, something uh, 
you know, opening a Starbucks through a franchising or McDonald's or uh, uh, Tim Hortons. Uh, but the me too strategy is you open a coffee shop, looks like a, 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 a Starbucks, but it, it, it is not a Starbucks, which is I see a lot that it's happening in, for example, in countries in Middle East, especially Kuwait or uh, UAE, where uh, young guys decided, you know, to open the store very similar to Starbucks, but they offer their line of product. Uh, you guys are very, in India, they're very famous in, in, uh, in a certain type of tea. So we had a store in, in, the, in the downtown in Kuwait, uh that uh forgot the name of the tea but they they offer a chapati and that tea in a high uh, rank uh business situation because they saw there's a high demand for uh, uh tea with the milk uh still can uh, i forgot the name soleimani and they call the store soleimani uh, but in, instead of charging uh, for example, 50 cents for a tea, Soleimani tea, they, they were charging $5 for Soleimani tea. And uh, they offer a line of chapatis. And they were Kuwaitis, uh, but they felt that if they open such a restaurant in a business district, is a different uh, 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 concept. And the business community will look at it as a new entrepreneurship because there is no uh, 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 Soleimani tea offered in, in, uh, in, uh, in the business district. So that's another way of innovation is uh, me too, but is with a adjustment. But the customers who is uh, looking at this, they should see it as a, as a something in you. So the business community who works in the downtown they saw it as a something in new. So people uh, imagine you going to, uh, to, to a place called Soleimani tea and you walk in, it looks like Starbucks. And uh, people, it was, it, it is very busy uh, area. So uh, uh, there's so many things you can, but the customer, uh, the customer saw it as a, as a, you know, an entrepreneurship and the people start going there. And now there is a copycatting, imitating Me Too businesses is happening in a high end, very expensive places, similar to Soleimani Tea uh, coffee shop. So uh, uh, creating an uh, creation of a new organization, uh, uh, offer some liabilities uh, of a new newness. Uh, uh, learning a new task is expensive and takes time. Or the role's responsibility may overlap and you have the flexibility and there is a gap. Uh, and the, the other thing that you need to do, the informal structure takes time to establish. Uh, because you're starting a new business, you don't know how the formal structure is going to happen. So the, uh, this is uh, this is where the liability it is. Um, the entrepreneur can also benefit from assets of a newness. In a word, that establishing a routine can be a liability when the firm face uh, changes. So creating a new routine might be costing time and, and money for your liabilities. But uh, if you have this previous practice and momentum and you work with a company who is their background is also part of it is like a, uh, into entrepreneurship. So that's where you get an advantage. So um, this is, where you need, if you have an idea to start a business, you need to investigate the background of this company, whether they are uh, already active in the field of entrepreneurship 
or not. If they are not active, then might cause it could be a reverse and causing troubles for you, uh, costing you so much. If they are active, then it's much easier for you and you have an advantage. So a new venture usually have advantage and disadvantage over a mature companies, particularly in, a, in, a in an environment that keep changing. So because a new venture usually has a flat uh, organization, uh, the, the mature company usually are very, uh, in a way, horizontal, which is there's so much process to, to be done to, to get something approval. So these are the differences between uh, uh, a new venture and over a company who is uh, a mature company who are trying to be, you know, entering the, 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 the information. So um, the, uh, basically, this is the, we have covered now chapter three, and we'll see if we can go with the chapter four. Meanwhile, please, if you have uh, any question, let me know and I'll be glad to answer it. Thank you, sir, we are good. Okay, wonderful. So um, and we will move on to the next chapter. And um, start a little bit of the next chapter and we'll continue on the next class to, to, to finish it. Um, just give me a second. Okay. Uh, you have a good day.